Well, hello again. Welcome to another Reflected Reality Simulations video. My name's Graham, this is X-Plane 11, and that was the data link chime on the Hot Start Challenger 650. So let's have a look and see what the data link message says. We've got three CDUs on the aircraft, so the data link is a good use for the number three CDU. You can use it on any of the CDUs. So data link, data link message, from Ops Control, Passions will be 45 minutes late, new arrival slot on request for Glasgow. Well, that's perfect. Welcome to Corporate Aviation. In the cockpit prep video, you saw me use the data link to retrieve a flight plan from Simbrief and to retrieve the winds aloft. It's important to understand that uh, although ultimately the data is retrieved over the internet, the Challenger includes a full global data link environment simulation. What I mean by that is, it's not simply uh, treating the request for the uh, flight plan uplink as something to fetch over the internet, but it evaluates to see whether or not a data link service is available. And that's something you can look at on the study menu here. So if we look at study, RSS, VHF data link status, you can see the CMU number one data link status. We've got stations on the CETA network, and the ARINC network, as well as uh, stations that are VHF data link mode A and data link mode 2. Data link mode 2 is more recent and it's a higher bandwidth. Mode A is the original ACARS stations. The aircraft knows where it is within the simulated world and it knows where the stations are. As I said, we've got a worldwide network of stations in here. It also knows about the terrain between the aircraft and the station. So on the ground at Montreal, we can see we've got a clear line of sight to the Montreal uh, transmitter. So that is available for data link. If we look at somewhere a little bit further away, uh, I'm guessing this is uh, Albany in New York State. You see the terrain between uh, the Albany receiver transmitter uh, assembly and the aircraft. Uh, basically the world is in the way. So the data link has to be possible for the aircraft uh, in the same manner as a real aircraft wouldn't be able to just pull the information via the internet, it needs somewhere for the antenna to talk to. It's using the number three COM radio for the data link. So let's pop up the MFD here. You see that COM3 is in data link mode. If I use my CCP and I scroll across to the COM3, I click the radio button. I can scroll across and take the COM3 radio out of data link mode. Now watch up here on the study window. When I selected the voice, it goes off data mode and we no longer have a locked station available. But fortunately, it's not just VHF data link the system has. We can retrieve weather and ATIS. So let's try, uh, let's go for weather first of all. I'm going to request a terminal weather and I'm going to ask for weather for CYUL where we are I'm going to ask for uh, EGPF where we're going EGPK which is our destination alternate as well as uh, Gander Keflavik and Shannon for our uh, ETOPS diversions so as I press send on that you see we've got SATCOM in progress. If I bring up the study window, RSS, in Marsat SATCOM status, you can see that we've got a bandwidth and receive transmit rate on the Inmarsat system. The aircraft knows about the orbital elements for the satellite. It also needs to know where the aircraft is because the antenna for Inmarsat is active. The antenna is steered point at the satellites. Just like the uh, kind of RV satellite TV antenna, as you see, where they steer around to find the satellites. The satellite antenna on the tail of the aircraft takes the aircraft position from the GPS system number one. So it's dependent on that GPS system one to be able to track the Inmarsat antenna, uh, the Inmarsat satellites with the antenna. There's the data link through, terminal weather, and we can see we've got weather for Montreal. All the weather we requested. So you've got global weather with METAR and TAF, 
and in the USA you've got Digital ATIS available. That's simply because it's only the FAA that publishes the Digital ATIS information publicly on the internet. Let's have a look at the GPS satellite simulation because it's very similar. GPS satellite position tracker. The aircraft has knowledge of the real world positions of the GPS satellite constellations and that feeds into the GPS unit. So it's not just reading the position from X-Plane, it is actually calculating its position based on where these satellites are. Now, I said the Inmarsat antenna is using that GPS position to steer and point at the satellite. If I set up a failure in here, I go to the navigation systems, I go to GPS, and I'm going to say that I want GPS number one to fail when I click Control F. So keep an eye on the antenna. The cursor here is the steering target, if you like, for the satellite. So let's fail GPS number one. You see we get GNS reser uh, reverted. GPS number one's offline, and the satellite position, uh, the satellite antenna position, has gone to the part state now. So there's no bandwidth available, in Marsat would not be able to retrieve the data link. However, if I send the request again, you see we've got SATCOM in progress, and that's because we've got a second system called Iridium. And again, this is another satellite system. You can see with the bandwidth and the receive transmit uh, data rates. It's using the real-world satellite elements to work out where the Iridium satellites are and to calculate the potential signal strength and data rates available to those satellites. So you've got VHF data link, you've got Inmarsat data link, and you've got Iridium data link available on the Challenger 650. So although ultimately it's using your computer's internet connection to retrieve that information, the information will not be presented to the aircraft unless the aircraft is in a part of the world that has data link coverage, that, ha that you've got the satellite system available. So it's a thorough worldwide GPS and uh, data link simulation. Inmarsat is a little bit slower, so it'll take a while for that data to come through. But while that's happening, what I'm going to do is go back into my failure menu here, and I shall magically fix my GPS number one you see it starts to come back online, and as it gathers its position, uh, as it acquires the position, once it fully connects up, you'll see the Inmarsat antenna start to steer and find those satellites again. The Inmarsat satellite is the primary SATCOM, the Iridium satellite is the secondary SATCOM, and Inmarsat is a uh, very high data rate, but it doesn't really work very well at high latitudes, so if you're doing a polar flight, you might find you've got Iridium satellites instead of uh, Inmarsat satellites being used. You can actually see all that as well. Go on the index, data link. On page two here, we've got uh, link status. Let's receive the weather. There we go. Uh, not link status. Let's go to uh, technical. I think it is. Link maintenance, SDU status. And this is the Inmarsat, the number one, it's the master. It's configured, but it's uh, available, not active. Now it's got GPS position, the antenna steers into position. You should see the bandwidth increase as it tracks the I4F3 satellite correctly. See it's available now, and we've got a data rate. And it's not something you have to worry about as a pilot. It's just interesting to see the level of data link simulation available on the Challenger. If you do have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section. I hope you've enjoyed the detailed video looking at the data link, and uh, there's a lot more Challenger content coming up soon. Thanks very much for watching.